What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're checking back in on a title that's actively done. It's out of the cooker right now. So we played this game about six months ago. I think beginning of October is when we played around with Stranded Alien Dawn. And I was very pleased with it back then. And it is time for us to do a final round of coverage for the game now that it's officially coming out. If you haven't seen Stranded Alien Dawn, this is a RimWorld-style colony survival game with sort of a Firefly flair. It's got a little bit of a brown coat thing going on with lots of kind of space southern music playing around and lots of steel guitars and things of that nature. Half the achievements are like vague Firefly references. It's a game where you've got to survive on a bug planet that has been inhabited by all kinds of nastiness. There's a couple of different scenarios you can play as now. There wasn't the last time that I played the game, but you can be crash landed on the planet by accident. Uh, you can be a group of traders that are there to exploit it. And the goal of the game is to earn enough money to buy the planet uh, for your trade corporation or your trade cartel. And then I think the final one is that you are a military detachment that's been dropped there to fight with the bugs and you win the game by erecting some super expensive, like, I guess, bug warding defense tower or something like that that basically kills them all or something. Lots of, I like the fact that there's different objectives, though, for different playthroughs. That's actually going to add a lot of replayability. Uh, there's kind of like a... So the game itself is open-ended, but I like the fact that it actually has kind of like victory criteria, and that victory criteria sort of affects the beginning of your game and like how you play around with it. I, I like that a lot. So we're going to dive on in today for about 35 minutes, see if it's something that strikes your fancy. I've played about two hours into the game so that we're not retreading territory that we already covered the last time we played the game. But if after watching this you wanted to get the game for yourself, I have a link for you down below in the description. That will take you to the 1.0 on Steam. And then on top of that, you can also take a look down there for my Discord and my Twitch stream, just in case you wanted to hang out live. Chances are I'll probably stream this game on Thursday, California time. Sorry, my house is being worked on right now because there's a problem with the subflooring and the wall framing and, like, the back part of my house. And so, like, they've been working on it for a week and, like, fixing everything, and I'm still not super sure when they're going to be out of here, but Thursday feels fairly safe, so I'll put that there. Let's go ahead and dive on in. So here we are. The steel guitar welcomes us back on into our zone. This is what I've built so far. Set a spell. Let me give you let me let me give you a little bit of a tour as to what it is that we've been doing out here. Uh, so as of right now, I have four survivors. I have built up some shacks. That's right. We have like one log cabin because I just got done with researching actual construction. But we have a little bit of a shanty town here. This is like our eating area on this side and a little bit of an improvised sleeping area. I've got a cook fire over here where we make delicious stews out of squashes and alien bugs like this guy right here. Look, look at this glutch right here. Look at him. Isn't he adorable? Don't you just kind of want to pet him? I don't know. He, he's got kind of like a testicular quality, I guess that I bet it, I bet his skin is really soft and really tender. I wouldn't know, though. We haven't really petted the glutches. They are friendly, though. They don't really care. They don't bother us or anything else like that. On this side, I've got a lightning rod because there are weather effects in this game and lightning can strike your base, and that's bad. I've got a dartboard for entertaining people and keeping their happiness needs up. Right here, you can see my warehouse. It's full of all kinds of goodies. Everything from gasoline to pumpkins is up inside of here, and then we've got Grayson, who is our researcher. Now, this game's a little bit different from RimWorld, and I think uh, this is a weird reference to make, but in this game, it's actually got a little bit of like a Jagged Alliance feeling to it, considering we just covered that. Not in terms of the combat, but in terms of the fact that this game, from what I saw anyways, uh, doesn't really have like randomized characters. Basically, there's a generalized pool of survivors that's probably about 30 survivors deep, and they are the same every time you play the game, and you pick like three or four of them on each run, and they actually have well-developed backstories. Like, each of these characters are actually pretty unique from one another. So we have Connor. Uh, Connor is a gunman, or like an assassin or something like that, that basically accidentally got crash-landed on this planet while he was in transit in between locations. He's got like vision implants, he's got all that kind of fun stuff. He's really good at fighting, and he's really good at anything that has to do with physical. Uh, he's got sniper eye, which is a perk that makes him fire his gun way faster than everybody else. We've got Grayson over here. Grayson's our researcher, our resident smart guy. He is the professor to the rest of our sort of like gingers and our gilligans. Uh, we have Ken 
over here, Ken is also a combat character. Ken knows how to throw down. Uh, he is actually the equal of Connor. However, he is also a scavenger. Uh, he's really good at scavenging space wrecks. So whenever we find one, like that guy right there, we get like double yields out of it pretty frequently when we claim things. And then we also have Maki. Uh, Maki kind of fills in the gaps that everybody else doesn't have. Maki is our doctor and our cook. And Maki actually cannot fight, if I remember correctly. Like, she's actually against, she eschews all forms of violence. So what am I doing right now? Well, I just started farming. We are on the precipice of summer. We may actually, I don't know what the yellow is right there, but we're in summer right now. I'm beginning to stockpile and store things up. I'm drying beef jerky inside my drying rack back here. I'm trying to get some research done. But at the moment, I'm actually trying to move everybody to more suitable housing, I guess. And so I think that's what I'll continue to do. I have 225 logs at the moment. Building in this game is very simple. Takes almost no effort whatsoever to build a house. Ooh, we have stone buildings though. Oh man, that's tempting. Stone would be really nice. I'm a I'm a sucker for I'm I'm a sucker for some cut stone, man. Uh, my last one was a little bit small, so I'll probably go five by five this time around. But we are not five by five to build because. I don't have enough wood. So I'm gonna go ahead and queue up all these trees to be chopped. And what you will see is that when these guys get done with other tasks, they will come on over here and they will commit some war crimes against the Ent folk. Everything in this game is very well animated. That's one of the things I liked about it the best, in fact. And if you doubt me, watch some gameplay of this game and watch the way the characters sit down at a picnic table with a chair tucked in underneath it. The animating in this game is actually quite good. Somebody put a lot of effort into it and it looks nice. Uh, everything is pretty believable. When your characters are wounded, uh, they actually reflect that. They walk with a limp or they drag a leg or they hold their shoulder. Uh, there's all kinds of little details in the animation of this game that I found to be very pleasing. Uh, other than that, during my couple hours with the game, I did find that the soundtrack and the sound effects were all very well designed too. Firing plasma cannons, Firing rail guns, firing laser guns, stuff like that. It all feels and sounds exactly like you would. Oh, there's a there's a ship back here hidden. Okay, well I'm gonna need them to drag back that wood. Otherwise, oh, Maki went to sleep. Okay, uh, we're not gonna be able to put down our housing, which I'm actually fairly excited about. That has medium insulation on a stone building. You would think a stone building would have like super insulation. I guess. I don't know that much about stone though, I guess, so maybe I'm wrong. We do want to keep things kind of packed in and near the lightning rod. But let's go ahead and go 5x5 five five on that building right there. We'll give them a minute to start fiddling with it. We've got to decide which area we want the entrance to be on. So let's go ahead and plop one of those down. I think we'll go with a wooden door. And we'll just have like a little porch right there centered up since it's a 5x5. Five five. Ooh, Ken got us some gasoline. I've got him assigned to go take a look at this wreck over here. And look at that. They're starting to lay down some laminate and knock out some walls like absolute champions. Good for you guys. Nothing like a task quite well done. Look at you lifting that log right there. Getting that upper body workout. Oh yeah. If you wanted to hear the gunshot sound effects, it looks like our buddy Connor is taking some target practice to keep his mood up. There you go. There is combat in this game. You will be invaded about every five days or so by alien bugs. I think that's been the timing thus far is every five days or so they seem to hit me. And it kind of depends, like honestly, not everything. So the planet's pretty organic, and I don't just mean because it's got all this green stuff crawling all over it. Uh, the AI in this game feels fairly organic. Uh, so from time to time, you will be attacked by things, and just like in RimWorld, if they run into other stuff on their way to you, they have to fight those things. And so actually, the last invasion that I had of bugs, they landed over here in the bushes, but there was an entire colony of sort of like these giant moa birds, or like these giant dinosauric emus and they got into a giant kicking, clawing fight with the emus, and the emus bled to death, and then they killed all the bugs, so I got to harvest all the emus for all of their chicken wings, which I then deep fried, because who doesn't love a deep fried chicken wing? And on top of that, we also got to make some pretty sweet bug stew. It's a pretty good come up. I feel like these birds over here up inside my business right now, they might need to go. These birds might need to get got. 
Let's go ahead and put a hunting tag on one of them, and hopefully somebody will chase it on down and get us. That's a whole lot of meat on that chicken right there. That's all that I'm saying is there's not a huge difference between a chicken and that thing. Uh, they are not hostile, so don't worry about them attacking or trying to hit you. This game does have hit chances, so you don't always strike your foe when you fire a shot at them. I don't know exactly what it affects, but even if it doesn't really affect anything, it's helping him level up his combat, which he has a passing interest in, so it's going to level up pretty quickly. This guy right here, he's going to auto-butcher just because we've got ourselves uh, a hunting tag on him. And as you can see, he's going to get on in there, and he's going to get us some foodles. Ooh, thunderstorm coming on in. And we got 40 poultry right there. Love it. Absolutely love it. So it looks like we've still got salvaging process on that guy, too. But I need to get this house built up. Is Ken... Ken, what are you doing? Oh, he's still scavenging this wreck that's way over here. Stop doing that and go back over and salvage that wreck right there. Now, this game does incorporate another system that's actually fairly interesting. When you click on an object... Let me see if I can find one that I haven't done yet. But when you click on an object, you get a tag right here that says Observe. In this game, you're going to unlock buildings and you're going to unlock ideas... Uh, based on observing the wildlife of this air, of this kind of alien planet, and you're actually doing the taxonomy out here. Like, I, I didn't name this a glutch, but I didn't know it was called a glutch. And so, like, we observed it for a little while, and after I observed it for a little while, we unlocked the ability to make a statue of it, and then, of course, he discovered that its name was a glutch. And so, kind of like fun little immersive things you can play around with. We got to slap a roof. Oh, it already has a roof on it. Last time I had to build the roof manually. Interesting. Maybe I didn't have it designated as a room last time. I was just doing walls. Feels plausible. Ooh, can I do like... Soft carpet. Ooh, you gotta like a leather carpet? Ooh, I don't know if I like the sound of that. I don't, I don't know if leather carpet is my jam. We can install some tile though. That might be kind of nice. Yeah, get people up off the floor, and then we'll take some furniture on in here. And my suggestion would be, the reason why I'm moving all these beds into different spots is because with everybody crammed up inside of here, they wake each other up like five times a night, farting and snoring. And so I'm spacing the beds out a little bit more so that they don't wake each other up uh, when they're walking around and doing general base maintenance and stuff. We find anything good inside of here? This game does incorporate the idea of moods and whatnot that you've seen from RimWorld. However, there are a little, a few little adjustments here that I actually really like. So it seems to me, playing for a couple hours, that there are stipulations in the AI. So I've noticed that they will go out of their way to stack up a whole bunch of positive traits if they have a bunch of negative traits. And I thought that was like a very interesting idea. What are you guys making over here? Unfinished meat soup. Oh, that's not good. I don't want you to make meat soup. I want you to make veggie soup. Make the, yeah, make the, make the veggie soup. Oh, that was a lightning strike and it was terrifying. I hated it every single way. That made my butt clench, dude. I don't know. Like, getting struck by lightning seems like... It seems to me that getting struck by lightning is really the universe trying to send you a sign that it's very unhappy with you. Like, it's just so random to get struck by lightning, you know what I mean? Like, it's just... Getting struck by lightning feel... It feels like the... Does it not feel like the universe is p picking on you? I don't know. That's what it feels like to me. Uh, let's go ahead and we need a fireplace inside of here so that they can stay warm once the winter arrives. And as you can see, a cool feature about this is it actually does actively place the chimney right there wherever you put the fireplace. Like, I keep looking for things that this game is doing wrong or badly or poorly, and I can't help but say here, this game is doing a really, really good job. They've taken a ton of, so they're not afraid. What I've noticed with a lot of colony survival games is that they're super afraid to step on RimWorld's toes. And my response to that has always been, why? Why are you afraid to... Why are you afraid to step on RimWorld's toes? Tynan Sylvester is one of the... He, like, wrote the book on Gestalt UI design. Like, he's written books about designing good UIs. Like, a go-to book for learning how to design a UI, in all honesty. And so, 
this game incorporates a ton of the ideas from RimWorld's UI, takes them, makes them work, but it's got like its own little flares and it really uses its 3D to kind of give you a different experience. Uh, you can you can play around. Maki is idling. Oh, there's a heat wave, huh? Outside temperatures are going to be 8 Celsius higher than normal during this disaster. 29C is not that bad, though. I don't think, anyways. I don't have access to an air conditioner or anything, so, like, eh. There, there's not much that I can do about that. Don't have it. Research tree, if you wanted to see what that looks like. It's about that big right there. Uh, you can get everything from landmines to guard towers. Right now, I am learning how to do tailoring, for example. Later on, we could get concrete rooms, or we could get bricks. Uh, we can learn to do masonry. We can learn to tame animals. Uh, we can get different armors and things of that nature, which is kind of... I wanted to get tailoring done. I wanted to get guard towers and walls done. And then I wanted to get leather armor done so that people could at least protect themselves. But at the moment, we do have fermentation barrels too, which is great because we just brought in that harvest right there. I would say let's make pickled vegetables. I don't know how much they like pickled vegetables in all honesty. Let's just call it 100 pickled vegetables, all right? We're gonna, I don't know how long it takes to pickle things in a pickle barrel. My wife does not do pickling. Oh, it takes 100 of these? Oh man, that's gonna hit the food supply a little bit. Okay, uh, but nonetheless, my family, my household, we don't pickle things. Uh, my wife makes lots of jams and preserves, if that's what you're excited about. My neighbor has fig trees and uh, my neighbor is constantly dropping off giant bags of figs because they love the fig jam that my wife makes. And so our deal is they bring over big trash bags full of figs. My wife converts it into like dozens of these mason jars of fig jam that you can put on your toast or you can put on your bagel, whatever it is you want to put it on. It's very sweet though. You don't, don't use a lot of, it is incredibly sweet. I don't know if you've ever had fig jam before, but fig jam is, is quite aggressively sweet. Uh, less is more, in my opinion. It's very good, and it tastes like cotton candy almost. Uh, but the deal is, uh, we, make the, we make the fig jam, and they get to take half the yield, basically, for bringing over the figs from their tree. And they have, they have no problem with that deal, because we send more mason jars of fig jam over there than we know what to do with. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of fig jam flying around. Everybody's eating meals. Uh, this game does have... Actually, I just told you to take a look at the animation for when they get out from underneath tables. It's a really good animation. I like it a lot. Watch when Maki gets out of there. She actually... She does like... Uh, that's not how I get out from under an eating bench. I swing my leg up and over and around and step out. But still, that's how people get out of of bench seating. That's great. That's really, really good. The animation work is really top notch. So now that we've got the pumpkins in, we also have a grain cob field, which brings in grains. I could have them ferment alcohol over here, but we haven't researched it yet. Go ahead and pickle some vegetables until we have a hundred of them. I don't know how many pickle, pickled vegetables they eat for one meal, but I'm kind of like working with a weather eye towards winter right now. I, I'm kind of trying to keep an eye on maybe having a lot of beef jerky. Like right now, I think I've got 70 beef jerky. That's not very much. I should actually probably send more people out. Do we have anybody idling right now? Ken is idling. Okay, uh, we should probably send people out on a little bit of a hunting expedition then. These guys right here are good for daily food intake, these little glutches, but you don't really get to make beef jerky or anything out of them. So I'd prefer to shoot something that's actually kind of like bovine-like or deer-like if I can. We got a couple of them over here. Actually, didn't we see... I think there was a dead body around somewhere from what I recall. I feel like I definitely saw a dead animal over here somewhere, but now it's not jumping out to my eye, and I don't think I really have like a a tool to find a dead animal. I can I can mouse and rubber band box everything and see if it's in the list over here, but I'm trying to remember where I thought I saw it. There he is right there. Nope, that one's alive. Never mind. I swear to God, I saw... There's one right there. Nope, he's sleeping. Never mind. Huh. 
Well, the animals do kill each other. They do predate upon one another. Uh, they, they, they do act organically in your absence. So every now and again, it's a good idea to kind of scan around the topography and just see if there's anything that was left behind by a predator that maybe you can just kind of go grab the meat off of. Let's go ahead and start with a bighorn over here, I guess. We haven't even observed these guys yet, though. I feel kind of guilty about it. Let's go observe them, and we'll find out what they are. I need to invent refrigeration pretty soon, too. Are we done with our research over here? Uh, tailoring is at 99%. Okay, I guess not. Looks like Maki is cooking up a few more meals, just to make sure that nobody's going hungry. I did see that somebody had a... A raw food tag on them that kind of concerned me. I will probably put our tailoring bench right here. Uh, we'll make it out of wood since I've got lots of wood. We'll put that. There's a joke in there somewhere. And that's how you know. See, that's how you know I'm not a fresh-faced 2011 streamer anymore. Is that, like, there was an easy wood joke right there. And I didn't even go for it, dude. I had, like, the easiest supply of content in the world and I didn't even shoot for it a small flying lizard is it cute though oh it's like a little dragon cool I like that oh Grayson's headed on out to observe this guy too and then on this side we're murdering one of his family members because we're crazy like that that's actually like an elephant sized buffalo that's like a buffalo elephant an elephalo What's it called? It's called an Olfen. What do you think? Does it look like an Olfen? I feel like it looks like an Olfen. Did we discover anything from small chance to retaliate when attacked? I was actually unaware of the fact that they could attack me. So I just learned a new thing. Ken, are you about to get eaten by an Olfen? Looks like he got 30 hides off the Olfen. And there's 49 meat laying over here. I do think we're going to have to kill a few more Ulfins just to get the old beef jerky supply up. My opinion, anyways. I do need to build, I think, another area. Oh, they built the tailoring bench. Is there anything fun that I can do with the tailoring bench so we can sew tops? Uh, we've got t-shirts. We've got fur coats over here so we can do leathers for those. Uh, jackets can be leathers, sweaters. It looks like, unfortunately, we're going to need access to cloth. So I don't know. Oh, we can make hats. Who who doesn't who doesn't love hats? I think we could probably do some fur caps and whatnot. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and make four straw hats. We got plenty of straw laying around, and we're in the middle of a heat wave right now. It'll give us six more degrees of temperature tolerance. Sounds good to me. Uh, this game also, actually, I wanted to show this. This game has a really cool clumping system. I'm not going to finish off this building, but, like, I found it to be very unique how you build temporary shelters in this game and, like, rooms uh, for just, like, storing things. I found this to be really cool. It clumps together, so if we put that guy down right there and I hold down the shift key, and I remember to do that, what you'll see is the building will actually put down support struts, and it will delete and add walls, and it'll add these little cabers and whatnot to create like a long barn or whatever, and then you can add walls to it later if you want to. Absolutely love that. The clumping in this game is just so fun to play around with. It took me a little bit to get used to it and how it reacts to like overlapping planes and things of that nature, but very good work. It's like everywhere I turn in this game, the developers have done a really good job at making a 3D rim world that's got kind of like its own flavor to it and its own sort of twists. Like, definitely one to keep an eye on. I, I don't think in a long time there has been a colony survival game that has jumped out like this one where I'm just like, yeah, I don't... I don't really see too many things that they can improve on here. On top of that, the game already has workshop support, and there's already modders working on, like, full add-on mods and things like that to keep adding more content to the game. So that's a really good sign that even if the developers say, hey, the game is done after the 1.0 patch, that's just like with MechWarrior 5, which is one of my favorite games. That's effectively, like, endless content for you to play around with. It's just whatever the talented, you know, modding community can come up with. And modding has saved a bunch of games for me, most notably Stonehearth, 
actually. Like, Stonehearth ended up getting bought by Riot and then sort of abandoned. Nobody ever did anything with it. At which point, a modder took over, and after they turned the lights out on Stonehearth, a modder took it upon himself to just keep working on the game and start delivering on all the things that were supposed to be delivered. And that, to me, is like a tremendous sign of just, like, the passion that exists in some gaming communities. Just absolute a new resource, CPU cores. Like, modders, man. They are just a godsend for games. And so, this game already has modding support in it, in case you were wondering about that. Chances are we can probably get away with a little bit more planting. How much have these guys grown? They've grown 11%, so that means roughly 10 days for these bad boys to grow. All right. Grows slowly but gives plentiful harvest. We could fertilize. I don't really have any animals dropping fertilizers right now, though. It looks like the pickling takes a good long while, too. Oh, really? So it's 10 pickles equal a meal. I wonder if the fermented vegetables give them a happiness booster if they don't like it. I have I have many questions about this. Uh, what's going on with my research? Research. We've got fortifications coming. I'll probably add leather armor to the list right after that. Uh, the Olfen, if you're wondering where his bits and bobs went, they went to the tanning rack right here. So we've got 30 hides that are going to take about five or six days to dry. We've got meat. Uh, the meat is going to take a good five or six days to smoke and dry as well. And that'll give us 125 beef jerkies, which is 12 more meals. Basically, I just want to make sure I have... A, oh, the there was still a shooting star, even though I have the game paused. Hmm. I'm trying to look towards the future and make sure that I have access to lots and lots of... Lots and lots of things, I suppose. That allow us to survive the winter when my guess is crops aren't going to grow. And animals are going to be a little tiny bit less plentiful, I guess. Yeah, I'm going to put a punching bag in these guys' house. And then I'd also kind of like to have like a window, I suppose. It doesn't need to be like an enormous window, but a window would be nice just for ventilation purposes. I don't know if they can shoot out of windows. I didn't have a chance to test it during the last fight. I am, um, I, I don't know, like my window was not facing the right way during that last fight. And so I didn't know if you could actually fire out of a window. We've got wardrobes over here. So that's for clothing and weapons. Good to know because I'm probably gonna have to expand these warehouses at some point. I've already got racks. And I think racks do resources. So I'll probably just have to like move these a little bit further out and away from the colony. Got 147 metal. That's not very much though. Metal's kind of hard to come by until you're able to mine. I've only found, I think, one metal node over here. It says it'll give us 20 ore, but I don't know exactly what the yield is gonna be for the ore. I do have furnaces, so I guess I could kind of, like, find the hell out instead of being lazy. Uh, it looks like this needs to be outdoors. Okay. Once again, fine by me. We'll go ahead and put the kiln right there and get that built so that we can start smelting metals and seeing what happens there. Maki is idling. That's okay. Maki is the doctor, so Maki is more than allowed to do so. And if there's one person I want fully on their A game and ready to work a long 20 hour shift. It's my doctor. The doctor, that's the thing about doctoring, right? In a provincial location, lots of downtime. But when something goes wrong, that doctor is, you know, to quote Firefly, sometimes you need a doctor, <laughs> you know? Uh, and doctors don't get to take hours off once they've got a potentially dying patient. So doc, you hang out, you rest, you be idle. Oh, there they are. Butcher that for me butcher that for me. I know it's a long run, but that's a lot of hides and a lot of meat for our beef jerky. But Stranded Alien Dawn has been utterly fantastic. I really, I played all morning to get ready for this video. I enjoyed the hell out of it. I have not seen any real issues. The game runs very well. It runs smoothly, even on my older hardware computer. The graphics look great. Uh, they are highly customizable. There are many things to fiddle with, which I'll show you in the options in just a couple minutes. Uh, it seems like there is a, there are, there is a plethora of things 
uh, for you to research and to play around with and to decorate with to make your base truly yours. I think the observation system works really well and unlocks new crops and new things that you can craft, that you can plant, that you can play around with. There's a lot of things working together here that I think make a very satisfying colony survival experience. But as I was saying earlier, I think the characters actually have pretty decent AI in this game. I haven't seen them do anything dumb. They seem to be aware of what a cave dweller do. Hold on. Is it because there's no lighting source inside the home? What did that do? That's a new one. Oh, he's also got a migraine. Yeah. It's really unfortunate that he's got a migraine. I need him to slap. Oh, he's got a, you got a beanie on in the middle of a heat wave, my man. Oh my goodness gracious. Uh, so where are these aggressive animals at? Quite a few of them, actually. Quite a few. Uh, that'll bolster the food supply. I'm gonna go ahead and we'll keep an eye on them till they decide to attack and I'll show you what combat looks like. Every character in this game can have a melee weapon and also a ranged weapon on them. They will fire their ranged weapon until the enemy closes the gap, at which point they will swap over to their sword or their machete or their spear or, you know, their plasma taser or whatever it is that they're using in order to take down the enemy. Uh, so I would recommend getting on weapon crafting about as soon as possible. The game does spawn you in with a decent amount of firearms and whatnot, so you should be well defended for the first couple days. Basically, I didn't want to break these guys sleep if I could help it. Yeah, but Ken should get better, right? What's Ken upset about? Few fun things to do. Well, I feel like Ken should probably get on top of that. Animal attacks coming. Let's go ahead and draft everybody. We'll bring them on over here. Maki, you're going to fall to the backfield because she can't even fight, so why worry about it? Uh, everybody else, get on out here, though. Yup, if you got a weapon, it's time for us to hold our ground. Show these bugs that we mean business. All right. Here the little bastards come. We need y'all to open fire. Go ahead and get them there, champ. Go ahead and put some gunshots on them. I'm gonna need you to tackle right here. There we go. Nice little tackle. Everybody get on in there and stab them up. Are they going after Maki right now? What are they doing? Go ahead and give me some gunfire on that bug over there. I would like for the big ones to die. There we go. Good, good, good. Ken has been injured. That's unfortunate. The other little bugs should go down pretty quickly. We have a doctor and we have meds, so we don't really need to worry too much about people getting ill or getting wounded or getting sick or whatever else. Yeah, you go on out there and fight him. Stab him with a spear. Maki, are you under attack? Oh, God, Maki's under attack. Maki's our... Oh, the big one got Maki. Uh, everybody over here, protect the doctor. I tried to separate Maki, but apparently they decided they were going to kill Maki, and they were going to kill Maki right now. I do find that sometimes, like, their cooldown is up, but they don't attack again, weirdly enough. I haven't figured out why that is. Like, if there's, like, an option or something that I need in here to make them follow-up shoot... But I've noticed they fire, and they don't fire again until I click again, and I'm not exactly sure what that's all about. Either way, uh, let's go ahead and get everybody all taken care of. Uh, apparently, there's one left. Where's he at? Oh, yeah, there's one little bug boy over there. All right, draft everybody. Hold on. We gotta kill that last bug. He's hiding in the bushes, man. He's hiding in the bushes. Some bugs were born, born to raise the flag. Ooh, the red, white, and bug. No. I thought Maki couldn't fight, but I guess I was wrong about that. I thought for sure that Maki had, like, the pacifist tag. The other thing we can do is we can issue orders to butcher all the buggerinos, and then their little buggy parts will go into our stockpile, and we will use them to make all kinds of goodies that will hopefully ease our burden as we go into the winter. But yeah, as I was saying, I'm very pleased with this game. I don't really have too many problems. The attacking issue is probably operator difficulty, and I'm probably doing it wrong. I haven't had a chance 
to play around with the expedition system yet. You can build a balloon and you can fly around and send them on like missions and stuff. I uh, haven't had a chance to do it yet though. And it seems to be kind of like the equivalent of like the caravan system from RimWorld. It's how you make contact with other groups of people and it's how you go get like rare resources and it's how you work on your win criteria. I think with this guy, the win criteria is you've got to signal a ship to come pick you up, I think. Like, you got to find a way off the planet, basically. Don't know how far in you got to go for that, but you got to do it. All right, there we go. So now Maki should help out. Maki's not happy either. Everybody's kind of cranky right now. Why is everybody kind of cranky? Burnout. It's always do this, do that. I need to relax. I got to do something to distract myself. Oh, it's because they've been fighting and they've been drafted and stuff for too long. That'll do it. Uh, your characters do have individual body parts, just like in RimWorld. They do get bit on those body parts. There are cybernetics. There are implants. All that stuff is here. It's it's a great game. I like it. I don't really have any problems with it. I think it's a really good game. If you want to play 3D RimWorld, that's what it is. If you don't like the 2D, here you go. Go go play you some Stranded Alien Dawn. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, it was Stranded Alien Dawn. Tomorrow, it will be something else. Thank you for sharing your time with me and for the luxury of your attention. I did promise you we would take a look at the options menu, and I almost forgot. You've got all kinds of things in here. Standard fare stuff right here, V-Sync. You've also got a frame limiter, which is nice. You can resize the UI just in case you have vision problems or you like a chunkier UI or a more svelte UI. There's a brightness control. Video options right here. They've got it split up into all the good stuff that you want to look at pretty much it audio standard fair stuff but with a few extra options like you know muting when minimized uh, you've got your control scheme over here key bindings fully rekey bindable uh, gameplay wise you've got the ability to get rid of camera shake you can swap between imperial and metric if you so desire to you can set your auto save intervals which is very nice pretty much uh, full marks uh, full marks for everything inside the options I will catch you all later. Thank you for being here, and that's about all I've got for you. Stranded Alien Dawn, folks. Bye-bye.